Hello there! I recently used Gravity Sketch for my thesis project at school. I had to make a presentation for validation before the big day in one month. While exploring the process of exporting from Gravity Sketch to Blender, I discovered an amazing non-destructive workflow that makes our Gravity Sketch models 100% editable in Blender. I just wanted to share that with you today. Before we dive into this, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't hesitate to leave a comment if you have any questions. So buckle up and let's get your gravity sketch creations seamlessly into Blender and make them fully editable like never before. Let's go! If that intro felt weird, uh, just know uh, that uh, ChatGPT wrote it for me. <laughs> anyway, let's dive right into it. First one is going to be just straight, like right now. Export as an FBX, we touch nothing here. Uh, this as default is gonna be like this. And so what this is going to do is just export this thing as I'm seeing it now. So that means it's going to be exported with the sub-D applied. Second way to export, here this model, I made it with creases. These hard edges are hard because of a crease and this is not going to export correctly. So on, with this method, you're going to have to add the creases later on Blender. But this is the one I used because it's the most uh, uh, volatile, like uh, I can modify it a lot better after in Blender. The reason I use gravity sketches for proportions and stuff, and then in Blender I refine it, make maybe the surfaces look better. So yeah, I'm going to uh, touch nothing here, export again, FBX is cool. You can export as OBJ too, but uh, it's uh, personal preferences. And then here I'm going to go sub D mesh control and this is going to export basically the box mode. Uh, yeah, box mode is an alias term, but yeah, this is going to export the base mesh without sub D applied to it. I can go back here and save. Also, it's a good thing before you export that each part that will have the same material have the same material. I mean, this, you can choose a material here. This is not the final material, but in Blender, when you modify this material and make it into the final one, it's going to apply to all of the pieces that have the material. <laughs> Last methods, uh, remove all the creases. And instead of the creases, what we're going to use is simple mesh density around the edges. Density around the edges that are supposed to be creased so this i'm adding a loop cut this is basically like control r and yeah that's it but this method is very destructive because uh, then inside of blender if i want to modify for example this point i'm gonna have to modify it with proportional editing to be able to move everything and it's gonna break some stuff like for example if i modify this slightly like this i'm gonna have this shape which I don't really want but it allows me to import into Blender, add the sub D and uh, don't have to go back and add the creases. So I'm gonna export this now as export 3 so FBX still a sub D mesh as a control up let's go so those are the three ways I would export. First one is the most destructive because it applies the sub D Second one is the most, uh, is the best for uh, conserving the editability of the model. And the uh, last one is an in-between of both. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my computer and uh, show you how it's done. Okay, so I'm back inside of Blender and I'm going to import every export we made into a separate collection. Import FBX. There is always uh, an empty, like it's always parented to an empty and I don't really like that. So first thing I do when I import from Gravity Sketch is I select all the meshes, Alt P and clear parent and keep transformation. And then I can just go ahead and delete all of the empties. So yeah, this is the first one we did. As you can see, it's already subdued and it's set in stone now. I can't uh, go ahead and just modify it easily. But, I mean, if you're done modeling and you know you're not going to touch it, this is a good way to export. This, I'm guessing, is the second one. Yes. So on this one, as you can see, it's, uh, if I shade flat. And by the way, yes, uh, Gravity Sketch adds some custom split normals. So you can just go ahead and clear custom split normals. Or else you're going to have some weird artifacts. Nice. But yes, so this is flat and I'm just gonna have to add a sub D. 
say two, three or something like this. I'm gonna shade back to auto smooth. And now we lost all the crease, but good thing is with Blender we can just do this and select Alt select like this, add the crease back in and I'm done. So that was quite fast. And the good thing about this one and why I think it's the best uh, is now I can just go ahead and modify everything. This is as if I modeled it today in Blender. So that's the best way. But uh, the good thing is I didn't model it in Blender, but in Gravity Sketch. That's way more fun. And the last one is just the one where we had the density around the edges. This one I just have to add sub D, set to three or something, and shade auto smooth. This one already has the creases. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that's how you do it with this method. That's how I made all of these. I mean, on this one, the cloth was added on Blender, and this, I had a separate uh, window that I made on Gravity Sketch, but the reflections were uh, absolutely terrible. So I had to make a custom one. Okay, uh, last thing we have as a kind of a problem is Gravity Sketch applies the symmetry. So what we can do is just, uh, I'm going to select the three of them, go to edit mode, this view right here, face select mode, and I'm going to select half of the model and delete the faces. I want to add a mirror that goes before that. And uh, the axis is rotated weirdly. I'm gonna apply rotation and scale and try to have a mirror. Okay, so you apply rotation and scale and have the mirror before the sub D. Okay, nice. I think that's, um, that's all we needed to do today.